Hello. Um, I've been playing with my SC2 mini lathe and uh, so far I've turned one thing in Delrin and two or three metal things. So I'm by no means an expert in lathes, but um, I do think logically. And this um, video is about the problems I've had uh, trying to part off uh, work pieces and uh, using the parting off tool for other purposes and the chatter and digging in that you get with this ST, SC2 lathe if you're not careful. It may be of some use to beginners who uh, have similar problems. This is the first piece, metal piece, that I turned in this SC2 lathe and uh, one of the things I had to do was to uh, cut this thread along here and therefore I needed an undercut here. I cut this undercut using an HSS parting tool that I have here, um, like that. And as you can see clearly, you can see this dent here. As I was using it, it became more and more difficult. I had to apply more and more pressure to get it to cut this groove. Uh, and eventually, the tool dug in at that point there, the workpiece flew out of the chuck and uh, I was quite surprised. Um, no harm done, the tool was none undamaged, but um, that's not really what I wanted to happen. But it seems to be the problem that happens whenever I use this HSS parting off tool. It starts out easily enough, but as you advance into the workpiece, it, you have to apply more and more pressure, eventually it dig, digs in and uh, disaster ensues. I had bought this HSS set which included this parting tool which fits in the normal holders of this cheap uh, quick release uh, um, tool holder that I bought. And that's absolutely fine but it, uh, it seemed to me that this was a bit wide at 3mm and so I was looking for a parting tool which was a bit narrower than that and I came across this one which is the uh, NCIH 9-2 which is an indexable tool which is 2.2 millimeters uh, across so I thought that's great unfortunately it doesn't actually fit in the uh, the parting tool uh, holder that comes with this quick release thing because this is 19 millimeters across and this is only 15 millimeters. So I bought it with this thing. It fits in there, okay. And then this will fit in an ordinary tool holder. Uh, this fits in an ordinary 8 millimeter tool holder like that. So now we have a thin parting tool which works on the quick release holder. Uh, this turned out to be a big mistake. The next job I wanted to do was I made this tiny stainless steel blind nut which I tapped in here and I just wanted to part it off by uh, using this tool like that. Um, and it turned out to be disastrous. So I put this tool in the quick release tool holder, made sure all these bolts were up tight, made sure this was tight, made sure that was tight, uh, lined it up and uh, started to part off this stainless steel thing. And this is what happened.
This is a repeating clip running at half speed. As you can see, as the workpiece presses down on the parting tool, the whole of the tool post and the top slide uh, rotates to the left. It may be that the cross slide is also rotating, but you can't see that because unfortunately my arm is, is in the way. And uh, what this did was eventually it just broke the insert. No real harm done except a three quid insert wasted. You probably noticed in that clip that in fact I wasn't using the quick release tool holder. I was using the old fashioned rather more hefty uh, steel tool holder. Um, that was because I thought to myself well maybe in an earlier test that maybe the quick release tool holder is the problem. Maybe it's flexing so I'll use this. But I think you can see from the video clip that um, in fact the tool holder is not the thing that's flexing. It, it's the uh, a cross slide and other things lower down. Like everyone else who buys a mini lathe, I had taken it all to pieces and set it up as I thought uh, as, as best I could. But there's always a compromise between having the controls really tight and um, having movement in where you don't want it. Uh, the uh, cross slide here is held in place with this uh, dovetail and so there's a possibility of movement there and then there's the possibility of the whole saddle moving here if this strip is not sufficiently tight. So those are the two places which could cause an upward movement on this side stimulated by a downward movement, a downward force on the tool. Going back to the configuration where we saw this unwanted movement, you can see that the workpiece is pressing down on the parting off tool here in, in, in a line like this. The cross slide here is supported by this dovetail, so if I press down here it bears upon there and tends to, by leverage, transfer the downward force here into an upward force here. Which, if not restrained by this gib, uh, will allow some movement. Equally, the saddle itself is supported on this rail here and here. And pressing down to the left of this point, again exercises a leverage effect and tends to make this side come upwards. If those forces, upward forces on the right hand side are not resisted effectively then you get this movement of the whole tool post uh, as we saw in the video. Looking at this diagrammatically um, the workpiece is rotating here and pressing down on the parting off tool which is fixed to the top slide. Let's assume the top slide is fixed completely to the cross slide. So pressing down here uh, bears down here upon the saddle and this acts as a fulcrum of a lever resulting in a, a, a similar force or possibly even a la larger force depending on the ratio of these two distances pressing the cross slide upwards here. So the cross slide wants to come up uh, like that, rotating on the fulcrum here. And the question is, what is resisting this upward force here? The answer is you say, ah, oh, well there's this dovetail here. Uh, but actually there is a gib here, isn't there? And there is a little uh, grub screw. Uh, clearly this dovetail here serves to hold the gib downwards by means of this uh, line of uh, metal to metal contact here. But if you ask the question what is connecting this gib to the cross slide, uh, the answer is this grub screw. That is the only thing that is preventing the cross slide from going upwards. So 
The entire force that the workpiece exerts downwards here is being resisted upwards here by three grub screws. And furthermore, this grub screw is just fixed in a very uh, uh, feeble and poorly constructed little hole in the gib here. Um, there's also the possibility, of course, of the gib rotating about an axis here like that. So um, this whole arrangement is exceedingly unwise uh, and is unlikely to uh, constrain a large upward force here. Um, there is one thing that the Chinese designers could have done. W we don't actually need the gib on the right hand side. We could have it on the left hand side. And if it was on the left hand side, uh, in this scenario, uh, this metal is bearing upon that metal. The gib is serving no useful function. It, uh, it, it, that works fine. This side, the upward movement is constrained by a machined dovetail which is completely rigid. This, in my opinion, would be a better way of uh, arranging it and it would cost no more to manufacture. But of course we can't uh, uh, make that change ourselves so we have to live with the one we've got. Uh, and all you can do is uh, do the grub screws up as tight as you can possibly bear and hope for the best. I have found it really difficult to set up the lathe so that uh, it uh, ran smoothly but at the same time had zero movement in all the uh, parts. Uh, but one thing that occurred to me immediately is that this uh, unwanted twisting motion caused by pressure here could be completely avoided if you could move the downward force to the right of the points where it's pivoting. So if we move this point to the right of this point and also to the right of this dovetail here, put it like that, then it would simply be pressing down on the whole thing rather than twisting it. So we can easily do that just by winding this back, winding the top side back. We can still get to the right place. But now the downward force is to the right of this point and to the right of this point. So it's just pressing everything downwards and there should be no twisting movement and therefore less chatter. That was my idea. Of course there's a limit to how far you can move the top slide to the right because it's already half off its own dovetail. So if we moved it any further, we would start getting lack of rigidity here. So that's another compromise that we have to think about. Going back to the way I originally wanted to use this parting off tool, uh, this accessory which comes with it, this holder, is perfectly rigid and made of steel, I think. Uh, but you can see now the disadvantage of it in that if the parting tool was held directly in the tool holder here, it would be in this line, whereas Using this device, it moves it uh, about uh, 15 millimeters to the left. So therefore, to get uh, to uh, apply my strategy of getting this point above the dovetail here, I need to move the top slide even further to the right. So that's the disadvantage of this uh, technique. I bought a new insert for the parting tool to replace the one that broke. Uh, it's taken ages to come because all the suppliers are out of stock and this one does not appear to be uh, have a titanium nitride coating as the old one did but this was the only one I could get. The supplier was rather vague as to what it's made of but it said it did at least say it was suitable for stainless steel so we'll hope for the best. So I've lined this tool up as suggested by my theory, so that it is above the left hand side part of this dovetail. Um, done all the usual things, made sure all this is tight, um, made sure that the tool is flat against the surface of the chuck here, uh, adjusted it so that it is as near the chuck as I can reasonably go. 
and um, we'll see this is the same stainless steel workpiece that I had before we'll see if this can part satisfactorily without chatter and without digging in actually happened there is that the part sheared off um, before the parting tool had got to the centre of the workpiece. And there is the workpiece. Um, I have moved the tool back a little bit. You can see that it it went to there and then sheared off. I hope you can see that. I used rather too much cutting fluid because I was just determined uh, that that wouldn't be a source of problem. Um, the workpiece was pretty hot uh, when it sheared off. The swarf that this produced is still not satisfactory. See, it's in very fine chips rather than a continuous um, continuous strip, which is what I would like to see. Looking at the tool, um, you can see it's rather oddly shaped with a shoulder on each side and a, a depression in the middle. Um, this is relevant when we come to look at the workpiece. Looking at this workpiece, I think you can see that it's smooth there and then there is evidence of a cut, uh, a digging in there, and then the shape of the workpiece follows the shape of the cutting tool uh, as it goes around very much, and at that point there I guess it sheared off. So now what the cause of that is Apart from the shape of the cutting tool, maybe me pressing too hard, I don't know. Well we seem to have successfully avoided tool post movement, but um, that chatter is caused by the tool vibrating into the work like that. Um, and uh, it seems that the way to cure that is to increase the feed rate of the tool or reduce the speed of the chuck. Um, I didn't do either of those things, so that's something that I can try next time. Um, there is a very interesting uh, video on YouTube, which I'll put a link to in the description, which advises that uh, a better way of parting uh, on the mini lathe is to put the uh, parting tool upside down and reverse the chuck, so it's going like that. And he has an animation which uh, shows why he thinks that's a good thing. But what he doesn't mention is that by doing that, you're actually reversing all the forces in the diagram that I showed before. So we're pushing the tool, the workpiece is pushing up on the tool rather than down. And that's just another way of solving the problem that I have been talking about in this video. Um, another thing that I've done is I bought 
a very thin HSS parting tool which will actually fit in the uh, standard hold the parting tool holder for the uh, quick release tool that I've got and um, some people say that carbide tools require too much power from a mini lathe and that you should use HSS parting tools so I'm going to try that as well uh, but this video has already gone on too long so I'm going to stop it now and we'll go on to part two in a few days. Thanks for watching. Meanwhile, I've gone mad turning Delrin for uh, a different project that I'm doing at the moment. Delrin is really luscious for turning. You have none of the problems that I've been dealing with in this video.